Welcome to episode 52, which brings a closure to the new widescreen game and watch series from Nintendo. It was also credited for nearly 30 years, as the last game and watch ever. And what is this famous game called? It's the super bright yellow rarity and the focus and star of today's show, Mario the Juggler. First offered for sale October 14, 1991, and reportedly selling upwards of 250,000 units, however this high number has been disputed in the past purely based on its rarity. A visually improved instruction booklet, complete with color illustrations is only one of the things that sets this game and watch apart from its predecessors. It was given the production code of MB-108. As we've seen in the more recent booklets, the table of contents is followed up with the backstory or description of the game, however today's game they use the heading of prologue. So the prologue is a little convoluted to say the least, but it does go on to explain why the various cameos and characters we get to see appear in this game for no real reason, other than it's cool. And truthfully and in all honesty, this is just a spruced up version of the 1980 game and watch called Ball. The booklet covers the normal routine of explaining both the time and alarm setting and its functionality, before moving on to the caution statements, as well as battery and screen care, together with the unit's technical specifications, and finishes with what is a cute line drawing of the juggler himself, Mr. Mario. So with all that said and done, let's jump straight in and see some actual gameplay. The object of the game is to keep juggling hearts, bombs, stars, and other iconic Mario objects. As already mentioned, it is all a reworked version of 1980's Game & Watch Ball, at least in Game Mode A, with all the Mario themes replacing the original's Mr. Game & Watch figure in its balls. The game features many improvements such as a much enhanced screen, with a beautiful colored foil background, that complements the yellow casing to perfection. The sprite is clearly recognizable as a modern version of Mario, with the LCD used to great effect to move both his arms and legs, and after the game is lost, his mouth also opens and closes in what looks like gasps of disbelief at his failure. The manual says that Mario was pressured into juggling objects, and the characters that encouraged him to start juggling were Mushroom Retainers and a Hammer Brother, as well as Lakitu who is on his traditional mode of transport, his cloud, but they end up getting jealous of Mario having all the fun and want to join in. Here we can see this happening in game mode B, and what's also interesting is that Mario has to juggle an extra object, you'll see there are now two hearts, meaning he has to keep four objects in the air, not just the three from game mode A. Although this is a simple game, it was clear to Nintendo that by 1991, the Game & Watch series had run its course, and to many of us, this was just a homage to the past 11 years of fun-filled, handheld liquid crystal display operated games that this once groundbreaking series had brought. Seen here are the two ways Nintendo initially sold their game and watch Mario the Juggler. First up is the classic box variant, with styrofoam tray, presented in a complimentary and very appealing box art package. Later, when sales were found to be disappointing and did not meet expectations, the various cheaper carded versions, or blister packs were released. And as I've already mentioned this is the final entry into the new widescreen game and watch series. So sadly this'll wrap up our review on these, however the next episode will begin to examine the unusual and somewhat unique tabletop series of game and watches that attempted to mimic the arcade experience that was popular during this era. And I suppose I couldn't just finish off without a quick look back at the inspiration for today's focus and star of our show, the original 1980 version of the game and watch called Ball. I've mentioned that Mario the Juggler was credited with being the very last game and watch offered for sale for nearly 30 years, but in 2009 Club Nintendo released an authorized clone of the original game and watch ball, and to their credit it was very similar, however the reverse was made very different to clearly differentiate the two versions. What likely killed off the game and watch series, was the launch of Nintendo's super successful and nowadays iconic handheld called Game Boy, which was two years prior to today's game and watch back in 1989. Initially shipped with the ever-so-addictive game called Tetris, rumors still exist to this day that a multi-screen game and watch featuring the game Tetris was near production, before being scrapped at the last minute as it was felt it might have eroded sales of the then-new handheld, the Game Boy. We've heard that Mario the Juggler lost its claim to fame as being the very last game and watch ever released for sale when in 2020 a new series of game and watches was launched, called the Color Screen series and featured the game called Super Mario Bros. This updated take on the classic game and watch also had a version of Mario the Juggler included, which looked more like the modern version of Ball found in Game and Watch Gallery 2, that featured a Mario characters in place of the 1980 generic Mr. Game and Watch, but if I had to choose between the two, it is definitely more like the 1980 original rather than today's depiction of Mario the Juggler. 
I'd like to take a quick look at the original box art, before we finish up with a montage of photos from today's star and focus of our show. So let's round up this presentation with a few more facts and tidbits. Firstly we'll look at the scoring, which is actually very straightforward. In game mode A, you score a single point for every successful catch. And in game mode B, the score jumps up a lot, and you receive 10 points for every successful catch. Also, worthy of note is as with most game and watches, you start off with 3 lives. And that finally finishes up the story for today. I'd like to take a few seconds to thank the few viewers that we actually have and tell you truthfully and sincerely, just how appreciated you really are. Thanks everyone.